everybody, it's Dan Bigman from LearnGPR.com, your GPR professor, coming at you again today with another great video about concrete scanning. And, uh, you know, when I talk with a lot of people out there who are doing concrete scanning, locating rebar, people are really using it in a very simplistic way, um, almost sort of to the point of there is, you know, reinforcements here, conduits here, and they're not here. And I think a lot of people who are actually in the industry don't even recognize or haven't been exposed, not their fault necessarily, maybe it's more academics and, and, and researchers' faults, or, or, or maybe it's um, you know, the faults of, of associations and organizations for not getting more information out there, or the manufacturers, you know, about what this stuff can do. But I challenge you to sort of take the next step to become even better you know, with your GPR, um, with your concrete scanning, offer more to your clients um, and, and really set yourself head and shoulders above everybody else. So how do you go ahead and do that? Right? How do you go ahead and do that? You add additional value. You add additional analysis that nobody else can even add because they don't even know it's possible. So for today's lesson, um, we're going to ask this question, which is can ground penetrating radar evaluate rebar diameter embedded in concrete. This is something that's sort of been evolving over the last uh, eight years or so. And as I've searched through the literature intensely, I found at least four proposals of how this can be done. At least four ways that people have proposed that you can use radar, uh, GPR to, uh, to identify rebar diameter, okay? Uh, of rebar embedded in concrete. At least four ways is what I found. We're not going to go over all four because I think that not all are very promising or I think that some are not as developed. But today, we're going to go over two that I think are probably the most promising as of right now and will probably be the ones that are most available to sort of GPR practitioners out there. So the first one is dual polarization that we're going to go over first. And the second one is digital imaging. The other two that have been found out there or been suggested are using amplitude reflections to evaluate uh, diameter. And there clearly is an association with how great the amplitude is versus how uh, um, you know, the, the larger diameter of rebar will generally produce a larger, you know, greater uh, amplitude reflection. Um, but I'm not super convinced that you can get an exact diameter based on the amplitude reflection. I think it, there's a lot of variables in there. The other one is called stationary wavelet <laughs> transformation, but uh, that really requires a whole lot of additional complex uh, data processing, and uh, we're not going to go over that one either. So the two that we're going to go over, dual polarization and digital imaging, are two that I think eventually will be pretty automated, uh, you know, that, that, that can be conducted by sort of your everyday practitioner uh, who uses GPR for concrete scanning. So how does dual polarization work? Um, here's, here's, here's what it, what it means. Your GPR with a transmitter and receiver and a, uh, uh, receiving, right, with your transmitting antenna and your receiving antenna will look something along these lines, right? Sort of a bow tie. Okay, so that would be your transmitter. Right, and that would be your receiver and they're in your little shield, your box, and if you are pushing it along the ground surface, right, so let's say you're going sort of this way, right, it's, you're looking top down, top down at your antenna, and you're coming this way, right, and your rebar are going this way, okay? This is uh, um, copolarization, okay? These are in the same Fields you're going to get, you know, your transmitter going over first, your receiver going over second. That's one way, it's one polarization, copolarization in that direction. So for dual polarization, there's a second way that you can orient your antenna to uh, record a signal. And that way is called cross polarization. So instead, your bow ties are going this way, right? So it's basically you flip it 90 degrees. And so what does that look like? It looks like something like this. 
Okay. And so you have a receiver antenna and a transmitter antenna. And as you put them across, both cross over the rebar at the same time, right? So there's a rebar. Okay, so this is called cross polarization. The way that dual polarization works is you evaluate the amplitude of your cross polarization, compare it to your co, the amplitude of your co polarization, and that ratio gives you what your, expect, what your diameter is. Okay, so that ratio gives you what your diameter is. And the way that these researchers uh, uh, found it was, you know, here is your ratio, and here is your diameter. They found a pretty correlated curve, right, their expected curve, with something along these lines, where the uh, greater the ratio, the greater the diameter. The problem with this, right, so, so what that means is if your ratio is lower, so it's like 0.1 and up here would be 1.0, right, that'd be the maximum. So here's 0.1, you know, 0.2 and so forth, is the greater the, 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 the ratio, the greater the diameter. So the more similar that your copolarization and cross-polarization are to each other, the greater the diameter. Okay? The less similar, that's a, a lower ratio, the less similar they are, the smaller the diameter. Now when they plotted this out on actual rebar, they found that it fit the curve of they, what they expected. The problem was, while it had the same shape, it wasn't perfectly on their expected curve. But that applying a factor to this, right, made it where it actually was almost identical to the curve, okay? So by getting that, you know, standard variable in place, that factor that helps push this up to what the expected curve was, they were able to identify what the diameters were with very, very good consistency. And the error of what the expected diameter was based on their ratio and what the actual diameter of rebar were, um, were, were very, very good um, within, I would say, I guess, if I remember correctly, about 10 percent plus or minus in error. So that's, that's pretty good. So this is dual polarization. Now what's annoying is if you have to do it once, do it twice, and figure it out on your own can be very difficult. But GPR are produced where they actually have both polarizations in the antenna at the same time. What that allows you to do is do a single trace this way it records both cross-polarization and co-polarization and evaluates the ratio for you based on what those amplitudes are. So then you'd be able to identify what the diameter of rebar actually is. So why is this even important? Right? Why is going over diameter even important? Well, when you're doing refurbishments to a building and it's a load-bearing you know, column that has rebar in it, understanding what the diameter of those rebar is is going to be related to how much it can bear. Right to what kind of load it can it can handle, um, so understanding that is pretty important uh, for structural engineering. So that's a dual polarization method, and um, we'll go ahead and do. I'll show the digital imaging. The digital imaging method uh, basically works like this. Do you have your that? Ah, terminal antenna. You have your antenna, okay, and it's going across rebar, right? As it crosses over the rebar, it's going to give you a hyperbola, right? It's going to give you a hyperbola. Okay, we actually will do this like this. Here it is. Here's your rebar. There's your antenna. It's coming across this way. As it hits, right, you're going to end up getting a hyperbolic reflection event. And what this uh, shows, digital imaging, is basically you take whatever the distance is of this hyperbolic reflection, okay? right? So whatever this distance is, which is L, is what we're going to call it, minus whatever the footprint is of your radar signal when it's hitting the target, that's E, so you take the total 
uh, uh, length of the anomaly minus the footprint of the actual signal. Divide that by 2 pi, and that equals your estimated diameter. So that's actually pretty simple. As long as you can evaluate what the length is of your signal, I'm um, sorry, of, of your uh, reflection event, and you can calculate what your footprint is of your signal, which you can do. We're not going to go into what that um, uh, formula is, but you can do that. It's not, it's not a very difficult calculation. So you can calculate what the footprint is uh, when it hits your target, and you divide that by 2 pi, it's going to give you your estimated, I guess it would be radius, but you can double that for your diameter. All right, so that's how this works. What's great about this is I think it's a simple enough formula where people can do it on their own. Okay, people can actually do this calculation on their own. This is a way that you can add value to customers, to clients, that nobody else is adding. I promise it. very few, if anybody, are adding diameter analysis. This is something you can implement right now uh, um, into your practice, and you can charge up for it because other people are not doing it. And it's very important to be able to understand what diameter is for structural engineering. Um, the nice thing about this is it had very, very good uh, estimations based on the actual rebar diameters. And so um, they were getting often two to 3% error. So if you have an, you know, a 40 millimeter radius, a, you know, an 80 millimeter um, radius, uh, and I'm sorry, a diameter of, of, of a rebar, and they're getting 3%, you know, that's a, three millimeters plus or minus for an 80 millimeter bar. That's very close. We're not talking dramatic differences here. We're talking a few millimeters here in accuracy. Now, obviously, the deeper the rebar was, the less accurate they got. So they got up to almost 7% error. Um, and the smaller the rebar is, the more error uh, there was in this calculation. So if you have small rebar and it's buried deeper, you're going to have the most error. But if you have rebar buried shallow, small or large, it was very reasonable, less than 3% error. Um, and, 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 uh, and it just, you got to be aware of how deep it is and what its diameter appears to be uh, in order to evaluate what the potential error is. But these were generally 3% or less, maximum of 7%, uh, even for small diameters that were buried deeper. Uh, uh, so I think that this is a phenomenal method uh, that people can implement right now. So I hope that this added value, I hope this showed you something that your concrete scanning equipment can do, that you can do today, implementable kind of thing you can do today to add value to your customers and your clients that nobody else is doing. If you want to be a third degree black belt ninja for concrete scanning, you need to understand all the rest that it can do. It's not just locating where something is or where it isn't but adding additional value and showing, oh, here's what the diameter is, right? Or showing, here's how much corrosion there is, okay, from your rebar, or here's how infected your concrete is from the corroded rebar. We have a video on that. I'll place it, uh, uh, the, the link below in the, in the summary of the video. Um, but, so check that one out. But you can do so much more for your customers, your clients. And you can show that you are head and shoulders, like I said, above the rest of your competition. Go out, understand what else you can do, understand how you can maximize the value of your equipment and your service, uh, and I hope this was helpful. If you found this helpful, subscribe to this channel. We put out great videos like this every single week, so subscribe now, and you'll get notified whenever we drop a new video on the LearnGPR channel. And if you haven't done so yet, go over to LearnGPR.com, put in your name and email address, and you will get immediate access to our free introductory training video uh, which is nothing like it online uh, uh, right now. So go ahead and do that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Share it around, and I will see you uh, soon.